Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, and you know, I've been seeing a lot of pictures on the uh, Facebook uh, forums with the different astronomy sites of the Andromeda Galaxy. It's one of my favorite targets, but it's very difficult to get uh, with the equipment that I have. It's, it's a large object. It's about the width of five or six full moons up in the sky. And, you know, the pictures, I, I would like to get something of this uh, value or this size uh, in the field of view. I want the entire galaxy to be able to be seen. However, with my telescope right now, uh, it's just too close of a view. And I, I, I need a different approach. How about making a mosaic? Yeah, I'm going to try it. A mosaic with the Andromeda Galaxy in Nina. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. You know, I recently took a picture of the Andromeda Galaxy with the uh, 0.8 reducer on the Eon telescope, and it just barely fit the field of view. It, 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 actually, it still cropped off the edges of the galaxy, even if, when I rotated the camera so it would all fit in. It still wasn't quite large enough, or the field of view, that is. And so, in Nina, there is a system where you can make mosaics. And that's what I'm going to try to do right now. And I'm going to show you how I process this and put it all together. The telescope that I'm going to be using is the Orion Eon 130mm triplet uh, scope. And this scope has a focal length of uh, 910 millimeters. That gives me an F ratio of 7 or uh, F7. However, that's not quite wide enough. I do have, though, the 0 0.08 reducer on this scope, and that brings the uh, uh, F ratio down to 5.6. A wider field of view, but still not quite wide enough. That's why I need to do the mosaic for this scope. All right, the first thing I want to do is go into Nina and load the profile. And from there, let's connect all our equipment, and Nina will take care of it from there. Uh, once all the equipment is connected, as you can see, it was uh, all, already all done, uh, I can go into framing. So Sky Atlas will be my first choice. And then type in M31, or the Andromeda Galaxy, search, and set for framing assistant coming up, go full screen, and there's my dilemma. There's the view with my telescope at the current setting at uh, f5.6 and the ZWO ASI 071 uh, one-shot color camera. It, it doesn't fit the view of the, uh, the, the galaxy. The galaxy is just too big to fit this field of view. So even if I rotate the camera, you can still see it's cutting off uh, portions on the uh, upper left and lower right right here. And so let's go back to the regular view. What I can do is add horizontal panels and vertical panels. And let's do a 2x2 two two and a 4x4. Four four. And there you got panel 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now this basically fits the galaxy itself, uh, just about all of it. As a matter of fact, I, I have the camera rotated just a little bit so it will fit that view right there. That looks good, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, in other options, uh, and I, I might try this after the moon gets out of the picture over the next uh, several days, uh, I can add a couple more panels. I can go eight or nine panels, uh, but that's going to take a lot of processing. But let's just try it with the um, uh, six panels. Now, that looks pretty good, too. But for right now, let's just go with the um, two by two. So there it is. Once that's all uh, set, then you just uh, go into uh, Add Target to Sequence. And in Nina 11.1, uh, you have the option of going into the Advanced Sequencer or just a simple sequence. Now the simple sequence, work, sequence works just fine, and so that's what I'm going to do. And it automatically puts the targets into uh, Nina uh, for the sequence. So you have Target 1, right there, Panel 1, uh, Panel 2, panel 3, and panel 4. So the next thing you need to do is make sure your uh, your camera cooler is on, if it's not already on. Unpark the mount, and uh, if, if the system is going to cross the meridian, do a meridian flip. Now, next thing we want to do is target options. We want to 
slew and center the target and then you also want to start the guiding very important and then also let's do an autofocus on the start and if the image should get out of uh, focus after uh, HFR amount uh, changes by more than 10% go ahead and do another autofocus there so Nina has got everything under control there you can see uh, my target right here um, I'm, I'm actually this right now in the daytime so this is now uh, but the target comes into view let's see what time is that uh, 1700 hours at 7 o'clock tonight uh, and then it's up just about all night so and this is the view of my horizon that I added into um, uh, Nina and I'm going to show you how to do that a little bit later not in this video but another video coming up next um, let's add the uh, sequence values and we're going to go 120 seconds or two minutes per frame in this particular example I, I have uh, the center of Andromeda is very very bright so I'm just going to use two minutes uh, and I'm going to do 30 of those so that gives me a one hour on this frame here I'm going to keep the bending at one by one go to hit the uh, dither on and the gain is 139 and the offset is well it doesn't matter on the uh, 071 there is no offset to worry about so that that point is moot right there and then you do the same for each sequence uh, you add the uh, values in each one uh, 120 like say for panel number four uh, let's do 30 of those for one hour and everything else is the same over here and we're ready to go and um with that I'm, I'm, it's going to take four hours right there just to get all these and then i could do it again after the meridian flip for another or uh, i have time tonight uh to do it again however um the process that i am showing you right now i already recorded this the night before so i have four panels right now so the question is what do you do with the four panels let's take a look so here we are into Photoshop and I loaded the panels in. This is panel number one and this is panel number two and I got this little bluish area here. I don't know what caused that but it was on the very very edge uh, but I got a feeling Photoshop's going to say don't worry about that I'll take care of it and panel number three there it is again and panel number four. All right so we have all four panels here together and all right, let's uh, go ahead and merge these into one. Now, how do I do that? Well, first of all, you go to File, and then all the way down to Automate, right there. So you go to File, then Automate, then go back to Automate, and go all the way down to Photo Merge. So here we go to Photo, photo Merge. And you have different options right here. And it's best just to stay with the auto, uh, as, as Photoshop's going to do a good job figuring what to do. And the next thing you want to do is open the files. And since the files are already opened in Photoshop, I can just open all those open files, and there they are. Panels 1, 2, 3, and 4. And just leave this alone, uh, blend uh, images together, and uh, there you go. And just say OK, and let Photoshop do its thing and it does it really fast now i tried this in pixinsight and <laughs> it was a pain in the you know what uh, anyway these are the four panels and, and compared to pixinsight uh, this photoshop way is a breeze and, and most people who have pixinsight also have photoshop that's why I, I have no fear in showing you this and look at it's already done and there you can see the entire galaxy uh, in this view right here and where's that blue area it's gone I can't even see it anymore I think it was right up in this area here I'm not certain uh, but it's gone Photoshop took care of it well here you have the entire image right here and you can actually look at see how Photoshop blended this together it didn't use straight lines it went in and looked around and then found the best places to merge and I can't even see any seams on here can you uh, it, it's almost seamless right there and you can see how it, it just merged everything together and it did a fantastic job and it did it relatively fast so the next thing I want to do perhaps well I got to flatten the image and let's just uh, merge visible you can do it that way and uh, go into here I could uh, rotate it a little bit let's say I want to do it like this 
well, let's, let's do it like that. And then uh, say OK. All right. And um, then let's go into cropping. And let's see what we've got here. We can crop it. Um, for right now, let's do it like this. And hit crop right there. And we, we can do a little bit better job on that. Let's try it again. Um, ah. I'll have that little black area there for a while, but that's okay. All right. And image cropping in. There I have it. And look at the size of this image, too. It's, it's, it's a pretty large image. Um, instead of 4,000 pixels, what do we have here? 7,260 7,270 pixels, thereabouts. So there, it's a large file to play with. I should have hit cancel, but it, it, that's okay. All right, and then from there, you can go into uh, filter, raw filter, camera raw filter, and uh, you can play with it and, and, and so forth and so on. Um, you can go into your basic uh, areas, uh, you could change the contrast, uh, just like so. Uh, the uh, highlights, you got that glare there. Uh, you know, in, in, in this area of Photoshop, you, you can spend minutes or you can spend hours. <laughs> it all depends on what you want and your patience involved. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that's getting pretty close right there already to something similar. Now, keep in mind that this is only a uh, one-hour image. Even though each panel was one hour, the total image time for this particular picture is just one hour. So I need to add more data to this image right here. And uh, um, I need to say OK. And it's coming out over here. It, 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 Again, I need more data for this. And I, I finished up a product. Let me open that up. Let's see if I can get it here. And um, right here. That's basically the same image after I played around in Photoshop for a while. And uh, there you can see um, there's the uh, M110 and the other minor galaxy over there, and one of the brighter stars in Andromeda. But, uh, yeah, perhaps that six-panel version would g give me a better view at that. But I'm going to add some more time to this and see what happens after that. Uh, right now, though, I'm very happy Photoshop came to the rescue. So my next attempt, after I take the lens cap off for it tonight, is to take a wider field of view even yet. I'm thinking about using that six panel mosaic to get my next view. Nonetheless, I definitely have to take more uh, uh, images. I only have an hour and 15 minutes on each panel, so that's basically an hour and 15 minutes for the entire picture. However, I need more data, and I do want to make that field of view a little bit wider. So I'm thinking about going with the six panel mosaic for the Andromeda Nebula. And hopefully things will work out just fine. Now remember, the heavens are filled with majestic glories like the Andromeda Galaxy, a trillion stars right there, and all in a sky near you. And unless you need rain, clear skies everyone.